Season 3, the Echoes of the Deep is in full swing, guys. The next guaranteed legendary event is around the corner, awakening the spring of Iskaland. And she's a pretty awesome legendary hero. Now, of course, we have chief challenges. In today's video, I'm gonna showcase you a team that will deal with the fire boss. This video is sponsored by Dragonair, so I just want to say a big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. If you guys want to get involved, you can download the game by using my link in the description down below or in the pinned comment or by scanning the QR code you see on the screen. Plus, like this, you get to help and support the channel. But without further ado, guys, let's head over directly to the chief challenge. This boss is actually pretty interesting. We're not going to be able to dodge his attacks by positioning our characters in a specific way. So his skills, guys, he has this passive. If he has a one or more buffs, he has a 20% damage reduction. Of course, immune to control effects. He's stacking damage over time. And the very first skill, the monster gains a random buff for 10 seconds and deals necrotic damage to the target. The random buff is selected from the following. So he can have increased attack, defense up, uh, damage uh, reduction, 30% uh, damage up, which can be pretty, pretty nasty, especially uh, if you're uh, hanging in the fight till the end, you know. Then the second skill is the same. The ultimate, how I mentioned, deals necrotic damage to all enemies. When the monster has one or more buffs, the damage dealt by this skill ignores the target shield, immortality, and invincibility. Now, we have quite a few awesome heroes that put shield in the fire element. We have Adolphus, we have uh, Alminster. So we want to make sure that shield stays on and we're actually reducing the, the damage. We need quite a bit of accuracy. The team that we are running today, guys, the main goal is to, of course, hit over 22 million damage. The more, the merrier. We have um, Alminster, we have uh, uh, Dane. He needs to remove the buffs, right? Then we have, of course, Tonalan, we have Erich. And we have Quarian, the rare hero, which will uh, provide uh, most of the healing. I'm actually a big fan of, uh, of Quarian. So the positioning will be the following. Uh, we're going to have Tonalan running all the way to the boss. Alminster is going to be face to face with the boss and soak in some of the damage. He is the one of the tankiest uh, uh, heroes in here. Plus, we need to have the rest of the heroes around him to make sure uh, they're all going to gain the shield, the healing. There's no reason to put them at the back line because you know what they're still going to to get hit now i don't have a better aura unfortunately only the enlightenment one you can use different uh, different legendary heroes if you have to deal the damage or uh, even some different epics the damage dealers are kind of like set in stone now if you are replacing dane to bring in for example liko she's amazing versus this fight because of this uh, skill that puts buff prohibition and removes buffs you're not going to have enough damage and you cannot remove the healer. You kind of want to keep Elminster for decreased attack and shield. So I feel like this uh, is one of the best format when we are talking a uh, budget in a, in a way or another. These are the builds that I have on them, but I'm going to show you stats and everything in a, in a second. I have two legendary ar uh, artifacts, the Ravatrix roots, and we have, of course, the Witch's Remains for defense down. I haven't put uh, the defense down artifact on Erich just to make sure we're going to have enough uh, enough damage, you know. And on Dane, we want to have uh, the Instance Burner or um, if you have, of course, the Rift Hourglass, just to ensure that he's going fast enough to remove the buffs from, uh, from the boss, you know. Now, in terms of skill timing, guys, that's what we have uh, on them. Elminster at 11 seconds. He will be on a 18.1 seconds uh, cycle. I wish I was getting more skill haste on him to get him down to 18 seconds so he can always use the ultimate at the, at the same time. Um, of course, my damage dealers will be on 20, on 19.7. So at some point, they will definitely desync from uh, the defense down. Those two seconds, almost two seconds difference will uh, definitely make... Uh, a pretty big uh, gap. Then uh, you want to have Dane at 18 second cycle and using the ultimate at 16.5. He's on a 20 second cycle, but he has the incense burner, which will give him exactly enough ultimate energy to ensure that he will be on an 18 second cycle, which is pretty good. Then you have Quarian going, uh, going ham here, having free reign, constantly using the ultimate. He has a very good cooldown though. I feel like that's one of the main reasons why I really like Quarian so uh, so much, you know. So let's crack on with the with the run, guys. You have of course uh, Tonalan running straight to the boss, and uh, 
the boss will definitely stack his damage very quick because we have no uh, no recharge speed penalty on this team. If you have different uh, different legendary heroes, guys, like big boy legendaries, if you have Jorn, if you have Victor, the one that was added in season three, he's very very solid for uh, for this. If you have, uh, for example, uh, Huldork as well, all three of them are very strong legendaries to replace Dane, you know, because not only that they remove buffs and stuff, but they put block buffs, they put decrease attack, the bigger version, so you have a better control with uh, with Alminster. Some of them uh, reduce the ultimate energy. You have plenty plenty of things going on with those three legendaries. So there we go. If Alminster gets resisted a bit with the defense down, or he doesn't apply it, uh, of course our damage will be reduced a bit. I really did not want it to give it to. Uh, to Erich, you know, to have the defense down artifact because I feel like I'll I'll be losing too much damage like that, you know. Getting the accuracy on uh, on him, it will be pretty pretty costly. Now, of course, if it's going to be a massive issue because of it, I can always change the build on Erich, give him the Witch's remains, go back to Elminster, give him the Crown of the Unclean. So like that, I keep the defense down on the on the boss pretty much all the time, you know, and. That will definitely increase the damage quite a bit. Uh, probably, yeah. Actually, I think it will, though, because how much damage can I lose with, um, with average? Maybe I'm losing 5% of his damage if I'm changing the artifact. Maybe I'm going to lose more, actually, because it's a lot of attack. So probably I'll be losing more than 20%. Considering that we are taking the artifact down, I have the uh, Eyeball of the Giant, right? That gives him 20% on the ultimate skills. It gives him almost uh, 900 attack. So it will be quite a bit of a difference. I'm not sure if that defense down uh, will make up for uh, for the difference. Probably, probably it will. So slowly they will be uh, uh, ranking up the damage even more, you know. So um, it's going to be fine. Tonalan, she still ha uh, didn't uh, fully proc the passive. Same with Average. Once the attacks are uh, all wild and we're going to get um, the extra crit damage on... Uh, Tunnelman, the damage will uh, slowly go up more and more, you know. But I think we are on the path to approximately 25 million damage, more, uh, more or less. And it's not bad, you know. You want to get 22 million. Uh, if you want to compete, uh, in here, guys, you need Flora, you need um, tons of crazy legendaries. If no, honestly, you're just not going to, to be able to get some crazy, crazy numbers. And, yeah... For that, you need 50, 60, 70, 100 million damage on this. And Flora can definitely, definitely do it without a problem, you know. That shield is, 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 go is massive from, uh, from Elminster. A lot of people, a lot of people said Elminster is just an, another average trashy, trashy legendary. That's what they said in, uh, in Season uh, 2 when he was introduced, you know. But he turns up to, to be quite, uh, quite essential for some of these teams. Because of that decrease attack and the shield uh, being placed by the same champion, you know, I feel like he's, uh, he's definitely very, very good. Now, the only thing is timing the defense down a bit better here is definitely going to, to give us the edge. For whatever reason, Tonnen, she's using that ultimate skill so, uh, so often compared to the rest. And I'm not even sure why, though. Actually, most probably... It's just that she had 19.7 seconds, right, on, a, on the ultimate skill cycle. So that might be the difference. So we are at 16.4 million damage. We have 1 minute and 30 seconds left. We might have to make a, a couple of changes with, uh, with them to ensure that we're getting the, the 22 million, you know, which is not going to be the end of the world. Like this, you get to, to see it as well, to, to know what it works and what it doesn't. We're going to have three more ultimates in here. We're going to be very close, actually, to the, to the 20, 22 million damage. And look at the, the damage that the boss is dealing. He's pretty damn hardcore now. Pretty damn hardcore, actually. Thankfully, Elminster, he can still put that increased attack right, uh, right uh, before the boss is using the ultimate. Because the damage is just nuts. Like, he's breaking our entire shield. Yeah, so we're definitely going to hit the 22. Of course, how I mentioned, it's better to, to get more than that. I think we still have uh, room in here for two more ultimate skills. Okay, there we go. 22 million. 
So if if I'm doing those changes, I think we are going to increase a bit of damage. I'm going to give it a go and show you guys if, it, uh, if it's going to work better or not. I will just need to drop a lot of attack on, uh, on Erich. So it might be a bit, uh, a bit costly for, uh, for the run, but I'm curious now as well. I, so I'm definitely going to try it. I'm curious as well. Almost 25 million damage. So I predicted it pretty, pretty correct. On the, on the road to 25. Look at that, yeah. Very, very close to, to what I expected, basically. What is it? 24.6? Yeah, 24.6, almost 24.7. So the damage is definitely not bad. You're getting the 22 million. Uh, considering that the Psychic Core doesn't even have the 5 man Elemental Affinity active at all, the damage is very, very good, right? So if I'm quickly going to try what I wanted to try before, so we're going to have to bring in here the Witch's Remains. Ooh, that's 900 plus attack drop directly. And I need to drop the, the rune as well for an accuracy one right now, which is going to be, again, very costly. 400 attack more. So I have a good uh, amount of crit damage. The attack is a bit low. So maybe it would be a good idea to look for an attack positive rune instead, just to up a bit the attack and uh, move, uh, move on from there. I feel like... That might be the right, the right choice. Come on, give me an attack percentage as well. No. That's, that's pretty bad. That's crit rate. We don't really need more crit rate, honestly. And it doesn't seem like I'm going to get one with attack percentage. So I might just keep the one that I currently have on. Crit damage again, yeah. So we're just basically losing crit damage. 16 for 229 attack. is actually not a bad... Uh, I don't think it's a bad trade, you know. I don't think is a bad trade at all. And I have two more. Let me just quickly, quickly do this as well. See if by any chance any of them will give me what I need. Okay, none of them do. None of them do. So let's look for the one with the Cree damage again, which was this one. Okay. Not, uh, not too bad. And on Elminster right now, we should be getting uh, something different. Let's get the Crown of the Unclean. 219 accuracy. Let me just quickly check the psychic core again, and we're going to come back to, to the run. So I think I have the accuracy done on, uh, on this, if I'm not mistaken. That's what I was doing on my account too, yeah. So we have uh, the accuracy up and running, but you see we have nothing in here. Nothing to give us the extra damage for a five-man uh, team. So because of it, we're basically... Only going to get this 15% uh, damage. Nothing, uh, nothing more than that. Very curious to see what's going to be the difference now with two defense down artifacts. And uh, is it really going to benefit us more or not? The problem that I will have, Elminster will attempt to use the ultimate on a 18 seconds. Uh, Erich will attempt to use it on a 20 seconds. So at some point, Elminster just won't be able to put the defense down anymore because the bigger version is, uh, is up, you know? So no matter how I'm playing around with the timing, um, it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna pay off for us, you know? But in the long, uh, the more we go into the fight, I think it should, uh, it should change, you know? One thing that I haven't paid attention to before was how much damage Erich uh, actually did at the end of the run to have kind of like an idea, but that's something that you guys can see in the video if you scroll back right now to kind of like get a better understanding. Already we can see that the damage is a, is a bit lower right here. But as long as we have that defense down more consistent for Tonalan to be able to drop in her big numbers, I feel like it, it will be more, uh, more beneficial, you know. So there we go. 3 minutes and 50 seconds in. The best thing on, uh, on Alminster, of course, will be... Uh, Artifact that increases the value of the shield, either the Elminster book artifact, either the Antinias Tiara, but then I'll struggle with the accuracy, you know. Okay. I'm going to fast forward, guys. I'm not going to keep you in the, in the run here. I'm going to fast forward at the end where we're going to see the total damage with these uh, builds on the, on the characters. So as expected, guys, I don't really feel like... Uh, is a massive difference in uh, in damage, you know, and it's pretty hard to time uh, Elminster to be able to land his defense down as well without uh, 
being uh, overlapped by the big one, you know, because the small version of defense down cannot replace the big version, even if it's only one second left on the big version, you know. So uh, the result is pretty much the, the same, really. I, I thought that it might be a bit uh, less than in the previous run, but seems like we are actually doing a little bit more. Now, of course, that can... Uh, that can vary as well a little bit if somebody doesn't crit, if they don't have full crit rate on and stuff. But seems like we gained uh, we gained almost one million. We gained like seven, eight hundred k damage. So let's uh, let's take it as a as a win, guys. Let's take it as a win. So what do we have in here? Let's see. We have a uh, seven point two million damage from uh, from average. Let me just quickly show you the builds that I have on the on the characters. You've seen my psychic core already. I have nothing crazy going on in there. So go to team and go to team 6. So this is uh, average. 3.8k attack, 98 crit rate, 200 crit damage, 234 accuracy, and we have 50k HP. Elminster, he is built on double uh, skill haste set, just to kind of like try to push him to the 18 seconds cooldown. 62k HP, 2.7k defense. 320 enlightenment 219 accuracy the enlightenment is very very important just to generate a bigger shield dane he is of course on a aerial battle roar set and we have 50k hp 1.5k defense 3.k uh, 3.7k attack 87 crit 131 crit damage 253 accuracy zero skill haste so you can see the incense burner 10 percent exactly uh two seconds out of the cycle Tunnel Nun, the same set with the Revatrix Roots. And we have 55k HP, 1.1k uh, defense, 5.1k attack, 76 crit. She needs 80 crit rate, but I'm lacking 4. 216 crit damage and the 13 skill haste. And we have Quarian on an Ancestral Protection set, just to soak some of the damage with a, a book in here as an artifact. 71k HP, 3.5k defense and... Um, the rest doesn't really matter on him, of course. The more skill haste you have on him, the better. But that was all for the video, guys. Hopefully you found it helpful. Smash a like, subscribe to the channel if you did. And thanks again to Dragonair for sponsoring today's video. If you guys want to get involved, head over to the link in the description down below to download Dragonair Silent Gods or the pinned comment or scan the QR code you see on the screen. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.